This show furnished by Carl Gerber and Employment Lawyers Group. Talk Radio 790 KBC. You're listening to Carl Gerber, and this is the Carl Gerber Workplace Lawyer Show, heard every Sunday night from 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. On this station, we discuss issues relating to the workplace, law, and, of course, employment law. Because it is oftentimes difficult to have emotional people come on who are involved in cases, we have reenactments, so you're going to kind of hear something like an old-time radio show tonight. Going back to a little bit earlier this week, something came to mind, and it's fortune cookies. I don't know if you knew this or not, but fortune cookies were actually invented in Los Angeles in 1918 by a immigrant from China. He had a company called the Hong Kong Noodle Company. I couldn't find its exact location. I think it might have been in what was then the second version of Chinatown. But he saw a lot of needy people around his shop, and he wanted to give them three cookies, and then he decided to put fortunes in them. And he had a Presbyterian minister who wrote the verses that went in the cookies. Imagine that. These are not really something from China. And then, of course, in 1914, a Japanese man also had fortune cookies. So they were invented in California. This week, I found myself in Port Wanimi the day after the 4th of July eating in a Chinese restaurant. And my youngest son gets a fortune saying, a thrilling time is in your future. My wife gets, may life throw you a pleasant curve. My oldest son gets, your heart is pure and your mind clear and your soul devoted. Wonderful fortunes. His golden-haired friend there with us, oldest son's friend, gets, simply, you are the chosen one. Everyone had a series of lucky numbers after their fortunes, and when mine came around, I opened it up, and inside it said, your number is up. No lucky numbers. Wow. (laughs) I don't know who made that fortune, but... I don't think I want to get that again. Some salespeople carry good luck charms. They have special ties, lucky shoes. I'm sure you've heard of that. They might carry with them that lucky charm to the handshake of the deal. Hopefully, they'll exchange goods for money and get paid on that. But what happens if a salesperson doesn't get paid and they're not still working for the company before the final payment is made? These can be big cases. You know, I had one that was worth over a million dollars a couple years back for a salesperson who was deprived of his commissions. There are 1.6 million salespeople who work in California, just in case you were wondering, so this topic should be germane to many. Tonight's episode is going to involve real estate sales in the heart of the desert communities, Palm Desert to be exact. You'll learn about contracts, particularly employment contracts, the laws against forfeitures, yeah, forfeiting, how there may be multiple employers in a situation involving an employee, and also how employment-related disputes are going to work in the real world of things. It's one thing to know the law. It's another thing to know that Sometimes cases involve people who are loved by some and hated by others and how that's going to come down if it's a judge or a jury. We'll also touch upon some of the legitimate reasons to fire somebody, even if um, the employer is not exactly right about that being the reason, but they have good faith belief. So you met Lisa Glickman on Episode 8 of this show. You heard about her on Episode 7. She is the lady that rose from the Calls Apartments in old-time North Hollywood to marrying a brainy former male model on the second go-around. And these days, she's the real estate maven in the hills of Sherman Oaks and Sino in the Mulholland Corridor. And so she's going to make an appearance tonight. She's live in studio with me. So, uh, Lisa, last time we, we met on the show, you've been sued by Rosa Santos Rosenstein. She alleged that you owed her something like $528,000 for working her 24-7 and not being paid while she was waiting to receive a call from you telling her to come into work. 
That situation has gone from being annoying to an ulcer in my brain. I presume your lawyer that you told us about on that show, Dumas, who doesn't know employment law, has done you um, worlds of justice since we last met. Not only has he charged me $109,465 for nothing, but now I am in more trouble. What now? I took on a project to raise money to pay Rosa Santos Rosenstein to settle her case. And now I am being sued because of that project. Lisa, you need to get a lawyer who knows employment law. What are you being sued for now? Remember my ex-brother-in-law, Benjamin the Gay Surgeon? I do recall writing him into the book, Does This Make My Butt Look Big? I also recall he was a longtime friend of your current husband, Ramsey, the studly former model turned financial genius. <laughs> yes, Benjamin Glick had a gay wedding at least 10 years before it was legal in California. That was one of the only good things about my terrible marriage to David. The groom's party oozed Valentino. Oh, <laughs> Ferragamo shoes, too. The whole place smelled like Tom Ford. So sexy. What does Dr. Benjamin Glickman have to do with your latest legal problem? He introduced me to a developer at his son's 10th birthday party. The developer built a Minecraft city for the party, a few thousand square feet of biomes overlooking the Newport coast. I have to admit, I gave Benjamin Remus Helm's contact (laughs) info. (laughs) <laughs> yes, Remus Helms again. Um, I gave him his contact info, and for free, Remus provided some creepers and witches. It was a fantastic party. Anyway, the developer is um, a real $9 bill, if you know what that means. Not oh. with the kids, of course, but he's lovable for a $9 bill. Uh, don't tell me you decided to work with this $9 bill. I was desperate all my overhead, and the market has shut down the last few months. Nothing at the top is selling. What scheme did you get involved in with this developer? The Nine Bill had a great idea. A 55 and over community in Palm Desert, retro modern, and all the things from the 50s and 60s to remind the buyers of their youth. Is this a new home development? It is. It is in the present. What is your role in this new home development? Isn't this a little far from your normal territory, you know, the hills of Sherman Oaks and Sino and the Mulholland Corridor? I've done deals in the desert before. There's a high-end market there, especially in Palm Desert. I don't mind going out to the desert. All of the designers have stores there. There's the Uptown Design District, Sunny Dunes, Vintage Road, the Corridor. I have personal relationships with most of the high-end merchants. I would expect that. Can you cut to the chase and tell us why you're being sued? I keep getting these people who never get to the point why they have a legal issue. Last week, we got a call from a so-called liberal. She claimed her business failed due to all the labor laws in California, and then she turned into a rant about businesses should move to Texas. I never quite uh, got her legal problem or why she wouldn't talk about her expertise as an LCSW, which the show desperately needs. But what can you really expect when people from your past are calling in randomly to the show pretending to be strangers? I'm from your past, too. Can we get to the present, for crying out loud? <laughs> what is this fictional character for 19, 2007 that is being sued for? The perfection team became the brokers for as seen on Color TV. I'm kind of liking the name of this new development in Palm Desert. Not that I recall hearing things like as seen on Color TV, because, of course, I wasn't born then. But I liked the concept a lot, and Nine Dollar did some phenomenal work in Park City, uh, Sun Valley. Not the Sun Valley where that lunatic Remus Hounds from earlier episodes of this show made me sell him his cosplay ranch. It's funny, there was a cosplay convention at the convention center this weekend. But back to this, did <laughs> Lisa, did you actually go out to Palm Desert and work this new development? No, I hired Ryan Sabretooth. Is that a real name? Who knows? What was Ryan Sabretooth supposed to do? He's a licensed agent. I installed him down at As Seen on Color TV. Presumably you saw his name on his license to sell real estate? 
It says Ryan Sabretooth. Although I was born yesterday, I presume he probably changed his name. Is any of this legally relevant? Ryan Sabretooth is suing me. I see. Why is he doing that? He got fired for sexual harassment. He said he wasn't serious and was just playing. It led to three sales. Only one customer got mad. I never listen to these people who are sued for sexual harassment and want to sue. There's just no legitimacy in their rants. You know, employers can fire employees if they have good faith beliefs they engage in conduct like sexual harassment, even if they didn't. He's suing for commissions. How was he paid? And before Lisa tells us how Ryan Sabretooth was paid, we're going to have to break. And I want to remind the listeners that I'm a real lawyer. I'm Carl Gerber, and this is Carl Gerber, Workplace Lawyer. You are, should call me off the air at 877-525-0700 for a real legal conversation. That's 877-525-0700. My office is 877-525-0700 for a confidential legal consultation about employment law. Since 1993, the Employment Lawyers Group has been a consistent force in fighting for the rights of California employees. They've represented thousands of employees in cases in which they've lost their jobs, been sexually harassed, discriminated against at work, or owed wages individually or as a group such as a class action. The Employment Lawyers Group has maintained a high win rate and a serious record before the California courts. Please call 877-525-0700 for an experienced work lawyer. That's 877-525-0700. They have call takers standing by. Online, research the firm at worklawyerca.com. They have offices throughout Southern California. If you hire the Employment Lawyers Group, your legal problem becomes theirs to solve. Morning, kids. Welcome to the Auto Han Ride Chair. I'm your driver, Katherine Hahn. Help yourself to choose boxes in the Stow and Go storage system. Mom, not this again. We proudly offer Apple Music or the available Uconnect Theater with games, apps, and all my movies queued up. Bored. Safety is our top concern. That's why we only drive the Chrysler Pacifica. Here we are. I expect a five-star review. Discover the full Apple experience with up to six months of Apple Music on us. Chrysler Pacifica. Up your van game. For more information about the Apple experience, visit www.chrysler.com slash apple. Chrysler is a registered trademark of FCA US LLC. Make your home an ADT home and help protect against break-ins, fire, and carbon monoxide. Get our lowest rate for fast response monitoring, starting at just $28.99 a month. That's about a dollar a day from the most trusted name in home security. Get ADT's tested, trusted, and proven security and service now at a great value. Don't wait. Call today. ADT. Always there. Now everywhere. Requires 36-month monitoring contract. Early termination, taxes, and cell fees apply. Certain markets excluded. See terms and pricing at ADT.com. Hold everything for less. The Pack Store Save event is going on now at the Home Depot, and the shelves are full of smart storage solutions. Start with durable 27-gallon storage totes for just $9.48 each. They're made of heavy-duty resin to hold up to 400 pounds. At that price, you should get a few extra just to hold the money you'll save. Come get organized at the Pack Store Save event going on now at the Home Depot. More saving? Or doing. Ballot through August 22nd, U.S. only. Diabetes, high blood pressure, anxiety meds, everyone's on them. If you're a 50 year old male, maybe a bit beefy, or even with type 2 diabetes, a million dollars of term insurance may only cost you about 200 bucks a month. Affordable term life insurance is out there. Call term provider and speak with Big Lou at 800 481 1458. 800 481 1458 or visit BigLou.com. Remember, Big Lou. Who's like you? He's on meds, too. Talk Radio 790 KBC. You're listening to the Carl Gerber Workplace Lawyer Show. I'm Carl Gerber, a real lawyer licensed in California. I regularly represent employees. Before we broke, we were talking to a character who appears on this show named Lisa Glickman. She's a real estate broker. She was sued by somebody for 
not getting all of her overtime, all the money that she was owed because she was on call. And so she got desperate and decided to get a project going with a developer in Palm Desert to make some extra money to pay the legal fees, maybe to pay the lawsuit. But at this new development down in Palm Desert, legal problems have happened, and she's been sued for sexual harassment because of an agent she had installed there before we broke I was going to ask her how this Ryan Sabretooth character, the one who was allegedly sexually harassing somebody or people, how he was paid. How was he paid, Lisa? 6000 a month against future commissions. The first two months, he mostly sat around on his Saint Laurent stretched spandex and cotton jeans, being all friendly. Why did he sit around for two months? The builders for a nine-dollar bill hadn't built any model homes yet. All we had were plastic models and drawings. Ryan Sabretooth reeled in two reservations then. But by month three, things picked up because the first real model was built. I can only imagine what that model looked like and maybe some googie architecture, I hope. But I'm a little sick of those A-frames unless it's really extreme. Maybe Polynesian architecture is what we had going at this development. Oh, the Tiki Shack is one option. It has an A-frame carport. I got $9 bill to put a radio transmitter symbol on the side of the garage. It looked a little like the emblem on the calls apartments. There's also Spaceship Landed. Uh, they might have ripped off your drawing for the building <laughs> you designed on Woodman Avenue and never built because of that tenant who monopolized the whole complex, hoping you would pay him off so you could build. And then your law partnership uh, ended and the recession came. <sighs> Did, did you hear the, the radio transmitter from the calls? It, it just got saved by Valley Relics Museum. Oh, my God. I would have paid $500,000 for that dingbat artwork. I bet you would have paid a tidy sum for it, too. Actually, I probably would have sold the entire Oxnard office for that piece of no-ho <laughs> sleeve culture, but half the transmitter was broken, although it wasn't uh, real silver, this transmission the symbol on the call's apartments where Lisa Glickman blew up, it turned green because where it was it was over where all of those Hesher girls and late seventies druggies walk through wearing ten karat gold. I think they're called Cornicello, something like that, or roach <laughs> clips. Um, those girls were wearing black and red on Fridays. You name it, and it turned that transmitter green, even though it wasn't 14 karat. It wasn't 10 karat gold. Oh, I only skated through that passageway 10 million times. At least I have the sense to wear 14 karat then. Okay, so like, can we get back to the point? Why is Ryan Sabretooth suing you? Nine dollars, so called partner, lender, financier. He fired Sabretooth. Is Sabretooth suing anyone other than you? In addition to me, he's suing the $9 bill and the financier Milo Milkerstein. I love these cases where I, I hear these employment disputes with three responsible employers. It sounds like this guy's suing the developer, he's suing his broker he worked for, and he's suing the financier of the development. What is a joint employer? All right, so way back in 1999, when employment law was much younger than it is today, I didn't appeal because a bad judge sustained a demur of mine. Imagine that. We, he held the facts alleged in a lawsuit against some big-time hotel were insufficient to ever state a lawsuit against the big-time hotel. And the reason for that um, didn't make a lot of sense, so I ended up getting involved in this appeal. And the hotel is got a garage where my client worked and the judge um, somehow thought that my client could not be an employee of this hotel because she was really an employee of the temp company that didn't have any on-site managers and was not in the valet parking business or the hotel business and they only did the paychecks from my client so Carl you are digressing soon we'll be talking about videotape rentals at Hollywood Video yeah, there was one there in my office when the valet case began. But joint employment is when two entities, you know, companies, they manage and control the employment of the employee. In the hotel case, the hotel had the ability to control the sexual harassment. They had the ability to stop it. 
My client complained to the hotel about it, and she complained to her management, and they didn't stop it or tell anyone about it. They didn't tell the staffing company about it. The staffing companies are otherwise known sometimes of temporary agencies. Um, so they just wrote the checks, and the person that could have stopped the whole harassment was the hotel. And so the, the financier was, you know, didn't control Ryan Sabretooth's employment. Lisa, just show me the complaint that Ryan Sabretooth has filed. I can tell you what this lawsuit is in like 20 seconds if I can just see the lawsuit. Uh, come on, come on. Hey, you're giving me the wrong papers here. Complaints are on pleading paper. They have numbers on the left side. The caption has the name of the parties to the right. The cause of action should be listed out if the lawyer for the employee is competent enough. You keep showing me letters from a lawyer, and now you're showing me papers with numbers to the left side, but those are interrogatory questions. Ryan Sabertooth's lawyer, he's asking questions, questions to be answered in writing. That's called discovery. It's not filed in court. It's just like those you know, written questions in the mail, like document demands where a party can ask another party to turn over all their documents. I, 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 just, I just want to see the complaint. Oh, the complaint. Okay. Now I'm, okay, let me see, let me see. The, the financier is, he's being sued by Ryan Sabertooth for interference with prospective economic advantage. That means that Ryan Sabertooth's lawyer alleged a financier, this Milkerstein guy, interfered with Sabertooth's ability to earn his money for sales in the as seen on color TV development. That's a hard theory that he's got there. It usually requires a violation of a law in addition to just interfering with someone's contract or ability to make money. It, it can be brought against a third party. You know, once I had. I had a case with a general contractor who demanded that my client be fired by, um, you know, my client worked for a subcontractor, and my client had called OSHA about some safety violations, and they violated a bunch of statutes, and this general contractor wanted the client of mine off the premise because he was saying the job site wasn't safe, and so we sued for interference because his, his job was interfered with. That's exactly what happened here. Ryan didn't call OSHA, but the financier demanded that he be fired. Why did the financier want Ryan fired? Um, did he sexually harass somebody? One person took it wrong. Ryan called the guy Sweetie and said he'd fill him up. He meant with floor plans and flyers. Milo Milkerstein overheard the conversation and told the $9 bill to fire him. Were you consulting any of us? Of course not. Rosa was helping me set up the perfection team's booth at the summer taste of Encino that morning. Now that Rosa's on a scheduled shift, we were setting up at 9 a.m. when the event started at 9 a.m. Do you have proof there was a complaint about Ryan? Oh, yeah. The man who complained was a CFO. Hmm. I believe he was on episode 10 of the show. Yeah. <laughs> he claimed the whole world was making a groin-grabbing gesture towards him, and his picture was sent to Hollywood as a picture of what the typical gay man looked like. But he wasn't gay. The guy thought if he moved to Palm Desert, he might escape Hollywood. Yeah, that, that guy was either very homophobic or his fear of being gay was part of the mental illness. But the company psychiatrist, I remember reading... Didn't think he had a mental illness, so that guy must be working again if he's got money to buy into uh, as seen on color TV. As far as I know, the guy got married to another man and said he only did it because the whole world thought he was gay. Gee, the extreme some people go to. I almost wonder if his whole act about the picture being sent to Hollywood was just part of a lead-up to him claiming he had no choice but to enter into a gay marriage. What does the lawsuit against me say? Okay, the lawsuit you finally showed me, the complaint I'm reading from Ryan Sabertooth's lawyer. It says you're being sued because Ryan Sabertooth was not paid his commissions. Do you know what commissions he's referring to? I am going to cross-complain against that financier. He needs to be sued. Who's going to pay for that cross-complaint? Won't you do that on contingency? Lawyers generally do not represent businesses on a contingency. I'm also not sure how great of a claim it could be that would be brought. Did Ryan, well, what did Ryan sell that would require him to be paid commissions? He put 14 homes into escrow and took 51 reservations. That sounds like a lot of work. Ryan Sabretooth outsold the other agent I had there. She only got three reservations and one escrow. How many homes are in this development? 
108 for the first phase and 216 for the second. Wow, that's a pretty big development, especially at those prices I presume they went out for. The second phase will be started in about a year and a half once the first phase is done being built and sold. Everybody wants into this retro development. I'd do it if it wasn't for the weather. How likely is Ryan Sabretooth, um, I mean, how likely is it he would have stayed throughout the second development? Very likely. He was going to end up putting 10 to 15 homes into escrow a month, if not more. He was smooth. Smoother than a polished granite on an 18-foot kitchen island in the Maholland Estates. In retrospect, too smooth. Well, under the law of commissions, you know, they can't be forfeited just because every single piece of work wasn't done before the employee left. So we are going to continue on with this episode. If you have any legal problems of the employment type and you're actually an employee, you should call me off air at 877-525-0700. Once again, 877-525-0700. A real labor lawyer, 877-525-0700. Since 1993, the Employment Lawyers Group has been a results-oriented law firm whose goal is to get the client what they deserve. They've represented thousands of California employees who've lost their jobs, been sexually harassed, subjected to employment discrimination, or were owed wages on an individualized or group basis, such as a class action. They have a high rate of success. There are few situations involving employment law that they have not confronted. At the forefront of employee rights, they're often the first employee law firm to confront a new legal issue. For an experienced employment lawyer call 877-525-0700 that's 877-525-0700 they have call takers standing by online read more about the firm at employeelawca.com they have offices throughout southern california make your work problem theirs to solve I'm so impressed with the Online Trading Academy that I've signed up for my own class. The Online Trading Academy is a leader in investing education designed to generate monthly income and grow your retirement nest egg. Give them a call at 888-991-8723 to attend and get two free passes to their next half-day class. And if you call right now, they'll send you home with a free Kindle Fire 7 tablet computer with access to their Do-It-Yourself Investors Kit just for attending. Visit them online at freetabletota.com. Give them a call at 888-991-TRADE. Tablet offers while supplies last must be 18 years of age or older and one tablet per household. Message and data rates may apply. If you are considering going back to school, ask yourself the following questions. Do you need the flexibility to take classes on your schedule? Do you have college credits you need transferred? Do you want to earn a quality degree from a world-renowned university? If you answered yes to any of these questions, Arizona State University is the perfect school for you. Arizona State University offers over 150 highly ranked degree programs 100% online. You'll learn the same degree as you would on campus from wherever you are on your schedule. Plus, ASU Online accepts most transfer credits. For information, text ACCEPT to 35517. Learn for yourself why the Wall Street Journal ranks ASU fifth in the nation for producing the best qualified graduates and why 87% of ASU grads are recruited within 90 days of graduation. Learn to grow, learn to succeed, and learn to thrive at Arizona State University. To learn more about ASU Online degrees, text ACCEPT to 35517. That's A-C-C-E-P-T to 35517. Talk Radio 790, KABC News Update, I'm Steve Cummings. Billionaire tech entrepreneur Elon Musk has shared photos and videos of a metallic pod that may help rescue the group of boys trapped in a cave in Thailand. Footage shared on Musk's Twitter account shows a group testing the device in a Los Angeles high school swimming pool. Musk said in a tweet this evening that the pod, or kid-sized submarine as he called it, was en route to Thailand and would arrive in about 17 hours. The man responsible for overseeing the U.K.'s exit from the European Union has resigned, citing irreconcilable differences with Prime Minister Theresa May. He delivered the resignation letter tonight. In June 2016, voters in the U.K. voted to leave the European Union, effectively ending a relationship that has endured for 44 years. Brexit takes effect in March 2019. KABC SoCal weather mostly clear this evening and partly cloudy overnight with lows in the mid-60s to around 70. More news coming up and continuous coverage on KABC.com. I'm Steve Cumming, Talk Radio 790, KABC News.
Hey, McIntyre here, and I couldn't be more pleased with the work done on my house by Josh and my friends at New Age Home Construction. They did a magnificent job, on time, on budget. If you're looking to do any work on your home, whether you want to transform your kitchen or bathroom, exterior remodeling, roofing, driveways, you name it, they do it, and they do it well. Check out NewAgeHomeConstruction.com, 855-600-0013. Mention McIntyre, and you'll get a free design with any signed contract, 855-600. 0013. Talk Radio 790 KBC. You're listening to the Carl Gerber Workplace Lawyer Show. I'm Carl Gerber, a real lawyer. And before we broke, you learned a lot about employment while you've been hearing about joint employment, a bunch of other things. I'm not going to summarize it all until the end of this show. We're talking to Lisa Glickman, who is a broker, a fictional character being sued for somebody that worked on her real estate development. I want to get right back to that conversation. I've been researching this. What if there was a morality clause in Ryan Sabretooth's contract? Actually, my husband Ramses, who you know used to be a model, told me he had a morality clause in his contract back when he modeled for Calvin Klein. Well, I don't think that a morality clause could supersede the law regarding forfeited commissions. Clauses and contracts can't supersede the law. You know, people and businesses can't make contract terms that are illegal or prohibited by case law or statutes, the laws that Congress and the Senate make on the state level and the same on the national level. Besides, I'm wondering, did Brian Sabretooth contract even have a morality clause? I can show you the contract. Yeah, I got to the point when I got a call about employee breach of the contracts where I require the person just to send in the contract so I can review it before I start talking about it. The terms of the contract, they do matter, and it's almost just negligent if you just start talking about the contract and you haven't read it. It can be misleading. It can be a waste of time to provide legal advice about a contract the lawyer has never seen. I brought the contract. Lisa, that wouldn't happen to be a, what is that, a, a Boda, a Bodega Vanita briefcase you're pulling those papers out of? I've heard of those. <laughs> oh, of course it is. And you know that because you wrote the script. Anyway, that ox you carry that says Esquire, question mark, would probably cost a thou, maybe a third of the cost of my case. Why the Esquire, question mark? Yeah, ESQ question mark. That's that's on an ox I have, which is a very large briefcase, and you don't see them much anymore because all of these idiots think they can win a case without paper, or they're too lazy to carry their file, or think they can maybe bring up all their files electronically, which is real naive considering you can't get Internet access in most courthouses, and even if you can, good luck, and even getting it in an arbitration. But the story is... I got that big briefcase when I graduated college, and I, I asked for the inscription ESQ question mark because it was to be determined that if I'd become a lawyer, I was only 20 back then, if you know, I'd make it through law school, pass the bar, and it was also to be determined if I would become a gentleman. Some of my manners are still a little rough, you know, and you can ask my wife about that who doesn't like to be referred to on this show. What's with the old girlfriend calling you up on the last show and pretending to be somebody else until you realize who she was? Strangeness tends to follow me wherever I go. I think it would have been more fascinating to the listeners to hear this was the woman I dated before I met my wife in 1999. And who knows, maybe she'll call back or be a guest on the show. We're starting to have regulars in terms of real people who call in because I like the content and the scripts and the show. But let's get back to this contract. Have you found it already? Uh, you've been looking at stalling and asking me irrelevant questions. <laughs> Here. Here's the contract for Ryan being a real estate sales agent underneath me with me holding his license as his broker. All right, so this appears to be a standard form contract for a real estate salesperson. It's a pre-printed form. Obviously, you're in control of this agent holding his license. The term of the contract says to provide brokerage services only on behalf of the broker, to follow the broker's policy manual and directions orally given by the broker, to use only real estate forms authorized to the broker, lots of control. There is some stuff in here which, uh, you know, you could maybe sue Ryan Sabretooth for, like, mm-hmm. to contribute to the defense and settlement of litigation arising out of transactions in which agent, that's Ryan, was 
to or shared fees in amount equal to the agent's percentage. Um, mm-hmm. He's supposed to defend you in a case against a financier, but the financier, I guess, hasn't actually sued you. Oh, there's an arbitration clause in here. Any dispute between the agent and the broker, it's supposed to, if it can't be settled, they're resolved by the Labor Commission. You're like, that's going to happen. And it can't be mediated. It's supposed to be arbitrated under the rules of the American Arbitration Association. I'm going to make Ryan arbitrate against me with the AAA. <laughs> Good luck. They don't have too many quality arbitrators for employment law, and I've heard they have the highest fees. They've been around longer than the other arbitration organizations, so their name makes it into a lot of these arbitration contracts. There's another issue. Do you want to compel $9 Bill, the developer, into arbitration, and can you? He he didn't have a contract with Ryan Sabretooth, as far as I know. He still has a contract with me, but I don't think that will be for long, because the other agent I have there isn't selling as much. I'm only concerned, um, or I'm more concerned about a big judgment against you by a not very good arbitrator who gets the facts wrong, maybe isn't up on the law, and you can't appeal. Remus Helms gave Rosa some legal advice through her husband. He said he was on your show on episode six, and his idea about arbitrators being older than him and wearing minotaur headpieces would put a kibosh on being able to find a qualified arbitrator. Yeah, that's part of episode six of the show, and that's uh, separately been put on YouTube with the title something like Arbitration is Insane, and uh, it's received quite a few views. But I'm getting a little concerned if Rosa is giving Lisa here legal advice, and she's suing you, Lisa, as far as I know. And then this advice is coming from Remus Helms, who quite possibly is one of the oddest people to appear on this show. And that doesn't say much, being that we've had Cindy D, who's a phone six operator, and plays the role of a cosplay Don or Remus's cosplay ranch. What do you think of the contract I have with Ryan Sabretooth? It, it does call for mediation, which would be a great idea, because I see problems for you, Sabretooth, who might not have been too serious with his harassment, but the financier didn't want him involved if he was doing that, and the financier did interfere with the contract. I'm not too sure on $9 Bill's liability, though, if he had a good faith belief he was firing someone for sexual harassment and it was in his best interest to actually keep Ryan because he was making all those sales, he was a super salesman, I, I don't know that what liability he had. And I'm presuming $9 bill followed through on, on Michael Milkerstein's orders to fire and wire Sabretooth, right? Dumas recommended a mediator. He's a retired family law judge who was a tax lawyer before he went on the bench. Yeah, I recall Dumas was a very sketchy lawyer who was defending you and didn't seem to know what he was doing on the last time I spoke to you. But it sounds like um, this person (laughs) is being recommended, the family law judge and the tax lawyer. He sounds like he's got the right qualifications for the employment law dispute. Hell, uh, you know, tax law and family law, that goes with employment all the time. Judge Odorama is $400 an hour. Yeah, maybe there's a reason why he's charging a rate from 1997. I've never heard of him or used him. Wouldn't he be effective because he was a judge? When was he last a judge? 1990. I may still be using a briefcase from them, but being off the bench 28 years pretty much guarantees this this guy didn't handle employment cases. What was he, what's he been doing since 1990? I'm not exactly sure. He actually went to school with Irving Glickman, you know, my old father-in-law. But Judge Odorama was in Vietnam and had a career in the military, so he's a bit older than Irving. Irving must be close to 80 now. I'm, I'm glad to hear he's still doing well. I don't have any offense to older guys. Some of them are very sharp. And let me see, I have a bio here on Judge Odorama. It says he started college in 1950, but decided to stop and go into the Korean War. I guess he stayed in the military until Vietnam in the early 60s, and he met Irving at Cal State Los Angeles. Now, when is the last time Judge Odorama actually mediated a case? Dumas said he last had a case with him six years ago, and it didn't settle. Why use this guy? Maybe Dumas uh, hopes the case won't settle so he can keep billing you. Do you still need the Sabretooth contract? No, but wait. Wait. (laughs) You never signed this contract here uh, with Ryan. Why is that? I 
thought it was good enough if he signed and I could enforce the contract against him. Not the best idea. Sabretooth lawyer is a very qualified plan, some employment lawyer. He's been doing this since before me, if, if anyone is still out there doing that. He doesn't take a lot of cases because I think he only wants the ones he thinks are good. So Sabretooth's lawyer may claim there is ambiguity where this is really a contract between you if you never signed it. By the way, it, it doesn't have a morality clause, presuming one would be valid. Uh, how much do you think I should pay Sabretooth? Lisa, this is good. On your second lawsuit, you're starting to think about how you can get rid of it if it doesn't stop you know, your business uh, just by getting rid of it. How much will it cost you? you know, it's going to be untold legal fees of your own attorney, not to mention you know, Sabretooth's lawyer because he has alleged a non-payment of wages, which could lead to you having to pay his attorney fees under California Labor Code Section <sighs> 218.5. What would even be the point of me getting insurance for these cases if it would never cover all these pay issues you call wage and hour issues? I will say this about your present lawsuit. Unless you were aware Sabretooth was engaging in sexual harassment, I'm not sure how liable you are in this dispute. Sabretooth was sort of acting like the lead of the agent who wasn't selling much. Oh, that's an issue. So when we come back after a break, we're going to talk about how they're de facto supervisors. If you have a real sexual harassment case or an employment case you want to bring, please call me at my office. I'm Carl Gerber at 877-525-0700. Once again, that's 877-525-0700. 877-525-0700. For a real licensed California employment lawyer. The Employment Lawyers Group is a results-driven law firm whose goal is to get the right result for the client. We have represented employees with a high rate of success since 1993 throughout the state of California. They're only paid and if they are able to collect money from the employer, so there's not any upfront fees or costs in order to hire them. They have represented thousands of employees who've been terminated from their jobs, sexually harassed, subjected to employment discrimination, or are owed wages in an individualized or group basis such as a class action. Call 877-525. 0700. That's 877-525-0700. They have operators standing by. They can also be reached at EmployeeLawCA.com. They have offices throughout Southern California. Hire them and make your workplace problem theirs to solve. Message and data rates may apply. If you are considering going back to school, ask yourself the following questions. Do you need the flexibility to take classes on your schedule? Do you have college credits you need transferred? Do you want to earn a quality degree from a world-renowned university? If you answered yes to any of these questions, Arizona State University is the perfect school for you. Arizona State University offers over 150 highly ranked degree programs 100% online. You'll learn the same degree as you would on campus from wherever you are on your schedule. Plus, ASU Online accepts most transfer credits. For information, text ACCEPT to 35517. Learn for yourself why the Wall Street Journal ranks ASU fifth in the nation for producing the best qualified graduates and why 87% of ASU grads are recruited within 90 days of graduation. Learn to grow, learn to succeed, and learn to thrive at Arizona State University. To learn more about ASU Online degrees, text ACCEPT to 35517. That's A-C-C-E-P-T to 35517. Ladies, let me ask you something. Do you actually believe those commercials that try to sell you perfectly styled hair? I mean, how many stylists do you think it takes to get that model's hair to look like that? Exactly. At Suave, we asked our models in our commercials to wash and style their own hair. Why? To show that Suave actually works. And they were blown away. Suave gave them full, smooth, easy-to-control hair in real life. But don't take my word for it. With Suave's money-back guarantee, try it for yourself. Suave, for hair you can believe. Dirty carpets don't keep a schedule. You do. That's why the Home Depot has the Hoover Power Scrub Elite Pet Plus Carpet Cleaner for just $148. Over $40 off. It's quick clean mode with heat force helps cut drying time to less than 45 minutes. If you have a schedule to keep, you don't want to sit around waiting on a wet carpet. The Hoover Power Scrub Elite, just $148, only at the Home Depot. More saving, more doing. U.S. only, Waspa's last, last. See store for details, valid through July 11th. 
Talk Radio 790 KBC. You're listening to the Carl Gerber Workplace Lawyer Show. I'm Carl Gerber, real workplace lawyer. Before we broke, we're talking to Lisa Glickman, who's being sued by a person who may be a de facto supervisor. So, Lisa, if this guy is de facto supervisor, someone acting like a supervisor without the authority to do it, but the owner of the company or management knows he's acting like a supervisor. That company is going to be liable for his sexual harassment. It's strict liability. You don't have to know about it. It sounds like you knew about what he was doing when he was flirting with all the guys. Though. Nobody is suing for sexual harassment. But if you thought he was engaging in sexual harassment, you would have had a good faith basis for firing him. Ryan flirting with the guys helped a lot of sales. Why else was it becoming the next big thing for the WeHo gay community in the desert? As they say, sex sells. Yeah, if your business model is based upon making deals based on sex, that's a sexually hostile work environment for those who have to act like that and those who have to be in that work environment and don't want to be hearing that kind of stuff. So I, I had a case against a large retail furniture store, and my client was sexually harassed by customers. It didn't seem the store cared that the customers were always sexually harassing their saleswomen. I started taking depositions in the case of witnesses. They all ended up being these extremely good-looking women that looked like models. Oddly enough, no males doing the sales there. And I started wondering if this was just part of the business model. They were purposely setting these women up to be sexually harassed in a large store. And I hired an expert eventually. He was going to testify to matters lay people wouldn't know about, somebody who'd be making the uh, fact finders learn about things they don't know and he said he thought it was odd that management couldn't eject all these creepy guys and these guys would just be groping these women and asking for dates and all that could happen in the store so you got to be careful if your business model is based on sexual harassment how much do you think i could end up having to pay ryan for the escrows and reservations he did it, it would have been wise, Lisa, if you contracted for percentages, like Ryan's overall percentage is X amount if he left voluntarily or he's fired before these sales close. The issue is going to be what a reasonable basis would be for these commissions based upon how much work he did. In terms of wrongful termination, I'm not sure you can be sued for wrongful termination because you didn't fire him, but his expected future lost wages and breach of contract and wrongful termination could include the whole time he would have remained on that project, that next phase two that you told us about. Can I sue the financier? Anyone can sue anybody, but will they win is the question. The financier may have interfered with prospective economic advantage. You know, that's the ability for Ryan to earn commissions into the future and to be paid on the sales he had already started, as well as interfering with the contract. But the financier's motives were not necessarily wrong. He believed development was not about sales through sex or sexual harassment, which is prohibited by law. I'm not sure you can win a case against him. Why do I have to pay for this? This might be a case that should be tried. A jury might not like Ryan Sabretooth because he engaged in sexual harassment. Everybody likes Ryan. That's why he's such a great salesperson. Weird things happen in jury trials or even binding arbitrations. The issue seems to be that some might feel Ryan Sabretooth is not terribly deserving of commissions because he earned them by flirting with the customers and the financier before. But the developer meant he wanted him fired for sexual harassment, which is illegal and has no place in the development. However, Ryan might be a highly charismatic guy that charisma might lead some fact finders to want to give him something. These psychological issues are beyond merely knowing what the law is. This is the kind of thing a sophisticated lawyer has to consider in making assessments. The arbitration or trial that happens in Sabretooth's case, it's unpredictable. The law requires he receive some part of his commissions. The person who stopped the commission process, though, was not his employer, and it sounds like the perfection team and the developer exercised management and control over Ryan. Neither of these companies wanted to fire him, though. So in a technical sense, Ryan might not be owed anything from the perfection team. That's you or the developer. And maybe the financier is not legally liable for interference with contract or economic advantage. But, you know, what if the jury or the arbitrator 
is mad at the perfection team or the developer for knowing about the sexual harassment and not not firing Ryan. The problem is this is a drawn-out lawsuit or arbitration involving emotions that the arbitrator also has to be paid a high hourly rate, probably $600 to $1,000 an hour these days. This is going to get really expensive fast. I've not seen your contract with the developer, and I'm wondering if there's an indemnification clause in there. What is an ind- uh, 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 what is an indemnification clause? An indemnification clause requires uh, the party, and usually a business relationship, to pay the legal fees and costs of another party if they're sued, or to pay their judgment. Do you have a contract with the developer, right? Of course. His lawyers are one of the biggest real estate development law firms in Orange County. They charge 800 an hour. That must mean they're good. Did these $800 an hour lawyers write the contract for the developer? Of course. $9 bill made me sign it. Did you or your esteemed lawyer, Dumas, suggest there be any changes to the agreement? No. It must be a good agreement because one of the top real estate development lawyers in Orange County wrote it. One of the top real estate development lawyers in Orange County wrote the contract to benefit their client, the developer, not you. I presume that top lawyer used all of his or her knowledge to make sure you got the right end of the deal. No, I get a 3% commission as the broker. On most high-end deals, I only get 2.5%, unless I'm on both sides of the deal. Lisa, did you look at any of the terms in the contract besides your commission? Um, not really. All too many parties to contracts are focused on just one thing, the amount of money they'll get under the contract, and they don't read the rest of the terms. I actually have the contract with me. I figured since I'd be on your show, I'd get free legal advice, and I know you are worth more than my lawyer, Dumas, and probably more than the lawyer who drafted this contract. Uh, Thanks. I was glad to work for free. It's a story of my life here. Well, um, I don't know. The contract is kind of long. Um, now that it's in front of you, I wanted to ask you about Clause 36B. You this see where it says contract of 60 pages, it has four exhibits, which must be 20 pages apiece. Do you expect me to know what Clause 36B says right away? I just thought C. Contracts are supposed to be interpreted in a whole, and that means they're supposed to be read in a whole. There's no way I can render meaningful legal advice without reading all of this contract and all of its attachments. I didn't draft it. I'm not familiar with its precise wording, its terms, all these attachments. Give me two or three hours, and let me think of some questions, and maybe I can give you some legal advice on it. Uh Is that why real lawyers out there don't give free consultations? You said it. In two to three minutes, I can tell someone if they have a case I want to get involved with, but there's no way I can read a 10 to 100-page contract in one or two minutes or even 15 minutes and render a valid legal opinion. I'm I'm also a little scared by the fact that I'm not sure you read this contract before you signed it, did you? Well, paragraph 36B is 14 pages into the first part of the contract. I was thinking maybe, you know... um, I was thinking you need a regular lawyer. How much did this perfection team do in sales sales again last year? I keep seeing your cards you send me, even though I have no intention of ever selling. (laughs) It's just like sexual harassment. A salesperson keeps trying until they make the sale. (laughs) <laughs> the perfection team did over $100 million in closed escrows in 2017. Listeners, you've learned some hard legal stuff. The concept of joint employers, we talked about contracts, which are usually a very boring concept. You've learned that commissions can't be forfeited. If somebody has done a lot of work, they're entitled to some percent of their commissions. You've also learned about these employment cases where a whole bunch of people sue, and sometimes Given the personality of a plaintiff or a defendant, it makes all the difference. And honestly, i got to tell you, juries, they go with whether they like the person. And if you've got a likable client, you win. And it doesn't matter what the law is. And the counterbalance on this one is Ryan's a sexual harasser. He might have just been playing, but he's a sexual harasser. People aren't going to like that. But the guy made a ton of sales. It sounds like he sold half his development. And he hasn't got any of his commissions, so that's unfair. So this leaves a very interesting question about what would happen in a case like this. And then you've got people suing 
each other. If you have three parties in an employment case and they're suing each other, it's going to be a doozy, and it's going to be even more of a doozy if the thing is an arbitration or having to pay the arbitrator $600 to $1,000 an hour. So these kind of problems do happen in the real world. If you have a real employment case, I want you to call my office at 877-525-0700. Once again, 877 877- Five two five zero seven hundred eight seven seven five two five zero seven hundred cases in which employers expect the commissions to be forfeited can be very big cases. They can be worth over a million dollars. They're very serious cases. Sometimes I have to bring these cases without having the contract. I just am having to do one right now against a car dealership where it's a very large commission and they won't give us the contract. So there is a way to allege a case if you own the contract and get the contract in discovery. But generally, you really want to see the contract and all the attachments because they're very precisely worded. And a lot of employees and employers, they really don't read the whole contract and they assume it must be a good contract because some great lawyer wrote it, but the great lawyer is not working for you, they're working against you. This has been the Carl Gerber Workplace Lawyer Show. I'm Carl Gerber. Please join us next Sunday at 7 o'clock for another episode on Sunday night. Join 790 KABC for the 25th annual Glendale Cruise Night, Saturday, July 21st. Come on, baby, give me some details. Over 300 classic cars on display, great music, and a fireworks spectacular. Cars, music, fireworks, I'm there. It's the best car show event of the year, and it's all free. The 25th annual Glendale Cruise Night, Saturday, July 21st on Brand Boulevard, right in the heart of Glendale. Cruise on over to KABC.com for more details. This show furnished by Carl Gerber and Employment Lawyers Group. 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 Carl Gerber.